Western Avenue and 10th and Chase. Mm-hmm. Uh, right mm-hmm. downtown. <coughs> Behind where the Pat Burger, original Pat Burger, was right there on Western Tenth. Mm-hmm. That's where you. Where you got Eastside guy? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know what they call it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 
I was uh, in Ikea. So who is working? I think that if it's okay with you guys, if if you were boss, and yeah, I'm okay, sure you're doing well, okay. 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 I'm just having some issues here, man, and so he's gonna show up. But I think we need to start with. Him. You mean Chris and Kayla and all? Right, that's what okay. I'm thinking. So we just kick it off with Ed Howe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. If that's okay, okay with you guys. Tell everybody yeah. Let me. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, though I'm not Henry Waxman, and uh, I, I want to say at the outset, um, uh, we're all gathered here as part of the Safe Climate uh, Caucus. Uh, I think Henry Waxman is uh, going to join us uh, as soon as uh, possible. Uh, but I, I speak on behalf of all of us and uh, members of Congress uh, in the House and the Senate, uh, as well as all Americans, uh, when we say that the country, uh, and in fact the world and the planet, uh, o. Henry Waxman, uh, a great debt of gratitude for the incredible work he's done in a whole range of areas in the United States Congress, uh, but for the purposes of today, all his incredible work uh, when it comes to addressing uh, climate issues, uh, clean energy issues. So uh, we salute him for his work, and because he's not able to join us right now, uh, but we didn't want to keep you waiting any longer, I'm going to read the statement uh, that Henry Waxman uh, had prepared. Uh, and then I'm going to introduce uh, my, my colleagues. Uh, so uh, here's, here's what Henry uh, will say. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, one year ago, a group of members from Congress uh, gathered to announce the beginning of a new caucus, the Safe Climate Caucus, that would focus on addressing the growing threat to our planet from climate change. Our members came from all over the country and represented diverse constituencies, yet we shared a common understanding that climate change is real, that it poses a major threat to our planet, and that Congress should be part of the solution. We made a commitment to have our members speak on the House floor every single day that the House was in session, and we kept at it day after day. Over the past year, we spoke on the floor for 117 consecutive days, delivering over 140 speeches about climate change. We talked about scientific issues showing the tremendous risks of climate change. We called for action after catastrophic severe weather events. We lauded new clean energy initiatives in our districts as a way to promote economic growth while cutting pollution. The House Republican leadership prevented action to address climate change, but they could not silence us. In a State of the Union address last week, President Obama declared 2014 a year of action. He reminded the nation that the debate is settled, quote, climate change is a fact. The president is right. This is a year of action. And that is why in 2014, the members of the Safe Climate Caucus are redoubling our commitment to action. We will continue to speak out 
on the floor of the House. But we will also be writing weekly op-eds and posting videos on YouTube. The Huffington Post has agreed to run an op-ed from one of our members every week the House is in session. Every week, one of our members is going to make a video for YouTube on the threat of climate change and solutions that can make America stronger. And of course, we will continue to speak on the House floor every week. We'll be doing more this year, but our mission remains unchanged. We will continue to shine a light on an issue that may be the most important issue facing our children and grandchildren, the future of the planet. Republicans may deny the science and ignore the threat, but we won't. We will be speaking out, writing op-eds, and posting YouTubes, as I said, to raise awareness, build public support, and encourage strong action by the administration. We want to thank all the members uh, in the Safe Climate Caucus. It's different from other congressional caucuses because of the premium we place on action. Our members have made this effort a reality, and I want to give each of them an opportunity to discuss why this issue is so uh, important. Uh, and now before I introduce um, one of our uh, members, uh, I just want to say a quick word. Uh, Lloyd and I, who I'm, Lloyd, who I'm going to introduce in a minute, we're at a breakfast this morning uh, with the head of the state of Connecticut's Green Bank. And there are now 11 states uh, in the country. Henry Waxman. All right. All right. How are you? How are you? Very good. Very I was good. directed by your team to um, <laughs> read your statement, but why don't I why don't I have Henry come forward and say say a few words? Uh, Thank right, you. Where right are now. you and, in uh, my statement? Well, I was I just finished your statement. I was saying a few words, and then I was going to introduce Lloyd. But um, okay, why don't well, you step forward? Well, thank right. thank you very much, uh, Congressman Van Hollen, and I'm pleased to see so many of my colleagues here in the uh, S uh, Safe Climate Caucus. We've organized this caucus to speak out about the, the threat of climate change and the, the ignorance uh, intentional of the Republicans who don't want to know about the danger or acknowledge the science. And therefore, we've been stopped from any action in the House of Representatives to deal with this serious threat. So each of us has taken a turn uh, every day to speak on the House floor about climate change. We cannot set the agenda of the committees. We can't call the scientists before the Congress. Uh, the Republicans are doing nothing, but we will not be silenced. We are going to move, however, to a new uh, strategy in expressing uh, how to uh, draw attention to the climate change issue. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, all of us in the Safe Climate Caucus will take our turns, not on the House floor, but doing an op-ed that will appear every day in the uh, Huntington Post. They've agreed to run an op-ed from one of our members every week, the House is in session. And uh, our, our members as well will make videos uh, for YouTube on the threat of climate change and the solutions that can strengthen our nation. Uh, we uh, will be doing uh, more of this this year than we have. Republicans may deny the science, ignore the threat, but we won't. So I want to thank my colleagues for being here, and particularly for Congressman Van Hollen, who uh, should have told me that there's traffic when you come from <laughs> Bethesda to the Capitol, and you shouldn't figure that everything's going to move smoothly to get here on time. But I apologize to everybody for my lateness, but I thank everybody for being here. And I now want to turn the speaking over to... Well, let me introduce uh, Lloyd. To, uh, yeah, to, uh, to Congressman gonna, Van Hollen, who uh, is now our uh, Masters of Ceremony. Sorry, <laughs> no, no, I don't want to take on that role. But listen, I, I th th thank you. Thank you, Henry, again. And I swear at my congressman every day about the traffic coming in uh, as well. And um, so so let, let me let me just say, I was mentioning that this morning, uh, some of us were to breakfast uh, by the head of the Connecticut uh, Green Bank. And I mention that because uh, this group is organized for action, and as uh, Congressman Waxman said, in the House, uh, the Republican leadership has refused to allow us to take any kind of legislative action. But we, what we can do um, is continue to push uh, the discussion forward, not just at the national level, but also uh, at the state level. And the states are moving. Uh, and the tragedy of this is that we could do so much more if the federal government would also 
move. The states and the people in this country are way ahead of this House uh, Republican Congress. Uh, and the danger for the country uh, is that if we continue to lag behind at the national level, uh, folks around the world uh, who recognize the potential for investing uh, in green energy and green jobs uh, will gain a competitive edge. Uh, so this has always been a win-win. Uh, we can put more people back to work. Uh, we can gain a more competitive edge in the international economy, and we can protect our climate. And one person who has been out there, along with Henry Waxman, speaking out every day, pushing uh, this issue forward is our, our good friend Lloyd Doggett uh, from, from Texas. Uh, and he can talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the activities that uh, he's been engaged in and all of us are going to continue to work. So, Lloyd, thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Chris. And, Henry, thank you not only for leading our caucus but leading our country on so many critical issues. You know, since Texas is the leader in greenhouse gas production and perhaps in climate change denying, I feel a special responsibility to speak out in this caucus on what I view as the most critical environmental issue that we face today, not only in Texas, but in the entire world. I look at my young granddaughters and think in their lifetime, Texas is on schedule to be consumed by more of the Sonoran Desert at the same time we have substantial receding of our coastlines and by one estimate, lose about a third of Galveston Island. We, at the same time, are in store for more of the severe droughts that we've experienced recently, erratic weather, more exposure to the spread of tropical diseases. The evidence of climate change is really all around us. I think that the choice is clear in how to address it. At some point along uh, this decline, America must have uh, new green technology. We can develop that technology here or we can wait to buy it from some other place. It is a matter of running a new green energy, green job economy or getting run over by it. I believe that uh, this House majority is determined to prevent the Congress from recognizing the reality all around us and to remain inactive and our caucus is determined to keep the issue on the forefront as it must be. I'm pleased to be a member because this caucus is about what is right for our health, for our economy, and for our national security. And to participate with people like Doris Matsui, who was there as we attempted to deal with this issue previously on the committee and remained such an important leader in the fight to get action on climate change. Doris. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd, and thank you, Henry Waxman, for your continued leadership over 40 years. Uh, Henry has been the go-to person on many issues, whether it be health care, technology, energy, environment. And in this particular effort, we are a band here of people who understand how important it is uh, for us to really understand the effects of climate change. I'm from California. And uh, I think all of you know that we are experiencing a drought that we've never seen before, certainly not in our lifetimes. I'm from Sacramento, California, and we, my district has two great rivers. I sit at the confluence of two great rivers. But even with that, there's still not enough water. It hasn't rained. This has been a record year in a sense of a record that we don't like. We've had the lowest uh, rainfall in Sacramento since the gold rush. That's a long time. It's a long time. And we're looking ahead, trying to find some solutions here. But if you also look at the fact that we have drought and we have fires. Last year was also a dry year. We had a record number of forest fires. We're on, we're on now, on the, on the climb to get even more this year. And that's not a record that we like. I have grandchildren. And it's really amazing how much they know already. Anna is 10. Robbie is 7. They ask me all the time. They're studying the environment. They see what's happening. So here we are. Many of us have children and grandchildren. We are planning for the future. And we need to do that today. And our little band here will continue to work. We are getting more and more people involved. And I will tell you, it is happening from the ground up now, from the cities, the neighborhoods, the states, they are all understanding 
because they know what is happening. So I am pleased to be involved in this Safe Climate Caucus because we need to ensure that the future is there for our children and grandchildren. And with that, I would like to introduce to you Ben Ray Lujan, who is um, a wonderful member of the Energy and Commerce Committee and quite uh, the shining light of the new member. Thank you, Doris. Thank you so very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. And first, let me say what a tremendous honor it's been to be able to work with Chairman Waxman. Uh, it's going to be fun working with Henry through the remainder of this Congress, but also in uh, making sure we continue to seek his advice and counsel with responsibilities that we all have. His distinguished record of service to our country on so many issues, especially when it comes to protecting our environment, is really an example to us all. And as we expand the efforts of the Safe Climate Caucus, I want to focus on one specific area. Doris talked about this quite a bit, water. All across the West, severe droughts are impacting our communities. If you haven't been out there, we invite you to come out. When many of us think about drought, we think about food production generally with our farmers and our ranchers. But we're seeing tourism that's being impacted right now this winter with low snowfalls where ski areas and communities that depend on this economic activity are feeling the pain. Um, this lack of snow is going to turn into a lack of snowmelt. It's funny how science works, isn't it? Uh, many Western communities, it's essential for drinking water. And lower water flows are going to result in a concern with hydroelectric power generation meeting its obligations, especially for me in the Rocky Mountain West with our friends in Nevada and Arizona. Uh, we heard from Doris about the concerns in California. This is real. This is an economic impact that we have to pay attention to. So our economy across the board is going to feel the impact of climate change as drought conditions continue to grip more and more of our country. Uh, no longer can our Republican colleagues uh, look at this with their eyes shut. We know that the earth is not flat and we know that climate change is real. And I certainly hope that our Republican colleagues begin to look at the literature and understand the importance that it's time to act. So. By being led by Ranking Member Waxman, uh, we're going to turn up the volume on this, and you're going to be hearing from us, and we look forward to working with you in this area. Uh, it's not my honor now to introduce someone that um, I've looked up to, um, I've learned quite a bit from. He has been a leading progressive voice as well for the Congress, for the country, and for working people across America, and that's our Progressive Caucus co-chairman, Representative Keith Allison. <coughs> Thanks, Ben Ray. And then also, let me add my voice to the many who thank uh, Chairman Waxman. Um, Chairman Waxman has been a hero to me, and thank you for pulling us all together today. You know, uh, climate change affects everybody on the planet and disrupts life systems all over the planet. But for some of our citizens, the bite is a little bit harder and disproportionate. And that's why I think we should use this 20th anniversary of the Executive Order on Environmental Justice uh, that's coming up next week to really highlight how climate change affects vulnerable communities. Uh, this executive order called for a decrease in the disproportionate levels of pollution communities face and increased climate resiliency of low-income and minority communities. Just a few stats to set the table. Extreme weather events like Superstorm Standy and Katrina destroy substandard housing and leave many communities with nowhere to turn. You see the catastrophic events and its effects on the newsreel. 68% of African Americans live within 30 miles of a coal plant. African Americans, Hispanics, Asians are exposed to greater air toxin, co toxic concentrations than whites in many metropolitan areas of, of our, around the United States. And uh, heat waves increase the risk of heat island effects in our urban areas, disproportionately hitting low income uh, and uh, even seniors in, in vulnerable populations. The bottom line is we've got to address this growing challenge of an unsafe climate more than ever. The debate is over. The time for action is now. And that's why I'm proud to be a member of the Safe Climate Caucus and calling for action now. Now, you know, uh, I'm proud to introduce Scott Peters, who is a man of action himself, came to Congress to actually bring scientific understanding and knowledge to the way we live our lives and to the fight around a safe climate. I give you Scott Peters, California 53rd. 
Thank you, Keith. And uh, again, thanks to Henry for all your leadership over these many years. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure we'll all miss you, uh, miss that, but we'll have a, we'll each do our part to fill the hole you're leaving us. So thank you. Uh, climate change is a top issue facing this generation. Uh, I practiced environmental law for about 15 years before I entered public service. Uh, and clearly that's the, um, that's the issue of the day in, in environmental law as well. Uh, in San Diego, we face uh, sea level rise, ocean acidification, more intense wildfires, and obviously drought, which is the, the big uh, discussion point um, of, of this week. Um, I'm honored to have been selected to be the task force chair on climate for our sustainability caucus, honored to be a member of the safe climate caucus as well. Um, and uh, I'm working on a few initiatives. One is to, um, to see if we can't reduce the effects of super pollutants, which are short-lived climate pollutants, black, um, black carbon, methane, and uh, hydrofluorocarbons, which uh, have a very powerful short-term short -term impact but don't persist as long. If we can get those out of the mix, we can have a huge impact now. But I'm also not giving up on this Congress. I'm looking at ways where we can develop agreement, uh, even um, in a particularly partisan atmosphere. Uh, two, two examples. One is we've introduced a bill called the uh, Strong Act, which is going to help uh, provide resiliency to community, communities on the ground. For every dollar we spend on preparedness, we can save four dollars on cleanup, and part of that's the FEMA budget. Uh, and then also we're looking for ways, what Gabby Giffords used to work on in the Armed Services Committee, where I'm a member, we're looking for ways to support the military's interest in investing in alternative energy. Uh, both uh, the, the Navy and the Marines interested in investing in biofuels as an alternative to, uh, to jet fuel, and uh, also in solar energy. I never met anyone who was a bigger fan of solar energy uh, than the Commandant of the Marines, um, who uh, makes great use of those technologies in the battlefield. Um, so we're looking forward to continuing those efforts. We'll, you know, we'll fight where we need to. We'll try to agree where we can. Uh, but this is a critical issue, and I, I want to thank uh, Henry again for your leadership. Thanks for the group here, including me. Uh, and now I'm happy to introduce my freshman colleague from uh, Ventura, California, who's led uh, on this issue not just uh, here in Congress, but also in the history of serving in the California legislature, Julia Brown. Uh, good morning. It is uh, uh, my privilege to be here this morning. I'm one of the newer members uh, of the caucus and um, uh, very excited about making a contribution to the caucus. And I, too, as all of my colleagues have done, uh, want to really begin by thanking uh, Congressman Waxman for his extraordinary uh, leadership on climate change. Uh, his legacy of responsible environmental stewardship uh, including the Clean Air Act, will guide us certainly for many, many years to come. And uh, Henry has been uh, my congressman for a very, very long time, and I can speak for so many uh, in California about their gratitude uh, in his leadership. Uh, climate change is real uh, through, as already mentioned, wildfires, sea level rise, drought, uh, certainly in California. Climate change impacts all of us, and it is certainly in impacting uh, my county, uh, Ventura County. It threatens our economy, our food supply, our health, and certainly our future our children's future, our grandchildren's future. Congress must, must act to curb this growing threat to communities across our great country, and I look forward to working with my colleagues uh, on the Safe Climate Caucus uh, to protect our communities and preserve our lands and waters for future generations. And now it is my honor to introduce uh, my colleague, my uh, cohort uh, from the freshman class from Wisconsin, who has been a an environmental crusader for much of his life, way before he came to Congress. Wisconsin is grateful for his leadership. Uh, a, a great friend, Congressman Mark. Oh, thank you very much, Julia. And uh, I want to add uh, one final voice to the chorus to say uh, thank you so much to Henry Waxman uh, for your career. Um, hopefully what you see is a commitment of more people who want to pick up and try to take 
uh, often help on the voice that you've tried to have on climate for so long, and uh, we're very committed to that. I come from the state of Wisconsin. Uh, Senator Gaylord Nelson is from Wisconsin, who's the founder of Earth Day. It's not just for that tradition, but it's for our economy. And Wisconsin, uh, a big part of our economy is tourism, our wonderful green and open spaces that people come and visit. Uh, is just absolutely crucial uh, that we can uh, make sure we're able to uh, keep that economy going. Uh, climate change is very real. Uh, but so are climate change deniers. Uh, in fact, we work with a whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, and uh, scientists agree that our planet is warming and it can cause serious harm across the globe. Uh, the effects of climate change are undeniable uh, and their consequences are unavoidable without action. And, and that requires action uh, from Congress. So uh, I'm very proud to be a part of the Safe Climate Caucus to make sure that I uh, continue the work uh, that we need to do to talk about uh, the issue to make sure that we're uh, illustrating the problems of climate change and eventually to make sure that we can actually pass laws that will improve uh, not only the climate for this country but for the entire planet and uh, I'm just very proud to be a part of this caucus. Thank you Henry. We're happy to entertain any questions members of the press may have. I hope the President of the United States will say no to the Keystone Pipeline agreement that the uh, Canadians want us to uh, uh, go along with. They will triple the amount of tar sands oil, which will add enormously to our uh, greenhouse gases and our climate change problem. It seems to me the argument that's being advanced is it's going to happen anyway because if we don't take that uh, oil, uh, it will still be developed and transported. I don't believe that, and w it's like the argument we ought to sell somebody uh, some very dangerous weapon because they're going to buy it anyway, and therefore we ought to get the, the benefit from it. We won't even get the benefit from the Keystone Pipeline. It will allow uh, the Canadian tar sands oil, the dirtiest possible oil, to be uh, transported through the United States to the Gulf and then uh, sent on to other places around the world, most likely China, for its uh, commercial uh, sale. So I hope we will reject that pipeline and it's up to Se Secretary Kerry and the President has said that it's up to him, that he'll make the call. Well, we, we're going to have to back him on a lot of calls that he's going to be making because since Congress is not able to act on climate change at the moment, he is going to move forward with a whole uh, agenda of actions through the EPA, the Department of Energy, Department of State, other governmental agencies to use existing law uh, to reduce our greenhouse gases. And uh, I think through that process, we could achieve the reductions the president committed to in the last international discussions. But two things we need to do beyond that. One is not let the Keystone Pipeline go forward because that's going to add to greenhouse gases. And secondly, uh, the uh, president is going to make uh, decisions that uh, won't require approval by the Congress, but we're going to have to stand here in the Congress and back him up. And I think the American people will support his actions. Yes. This group is all about being able to speak up, uh, talk truth to power. The power in the House right now is a Republican control that will not allow the Congress through its usual mechanisms of hearings to get another point of view, which is the point of view of those of us who are concerned and, and the overwhelming scientific con consensus concerned about what's happening with the climate change. So I wouldn't want this group to take the position uh, that we're not going to let people during their uh, presentations uh, say anything one way or the other about another issue, especially one that is related to, um, uh, to the climate change matter.
and this group that stands behind me <laughs> is going to be there to speak out. Yes? I've been very careful in saying very precisely that Congress is not uh, going to act at the present time, but the present time can be changed, even with some of the present members, uh, with it, when the public pressure grows. Uh, I, American people aren't going to buy this argument uh, that if their Republican leaders say there is no such thing as climate change, and if they're Republicans, they should believe that position and deny science which is not a pol political point of view, but uh, uh, conclusions based on evidence. So I think the American people, as they see one climate disaster following another with the nightly news dominated almost every single night by a, a climate issue uh, disaster, that uh, they're not going to wake up and say to their representatives, how can you deny this? How can you insist on ignoring uh, the, what is going on? So uh, I think the, the pressure on the, on the um, Congress will grow as the, uh, as the uh, public opinion starts demanding some action. And so I think the Congress will get to a point where we will start acting, but at the meantime, we have to rely on the president uh, to do much of what uh, we could do by law uh, in, in ways that I think would even be more conducive to reducing the climate um, threats. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, the president has authority to take a lot of actions uh, on his own, and we need to support those actions. Yes. Um, following up on that, in terms of the present time, when the Republican Party and John Lennon took the Congress Committee to speak on green climate, it was in some interests to discuss about removing some sources of our source amount from the ocean to reach some other policy issues. Has there been a shift in engagement with Republicans on those kinds of issues since the March 6th summit in speaking to Congress? I'm hopeful uh, that there's going to be some movement on some things that we can do, and energy efficiency is one that uh, looks like uh, uh, there's more of a consensus behind it. I don't think it's related to my announcement that I'm retiring. It, it's been moving along, uh, uh, and, and now in the Senate they're getting close, and we've been talking in the House as well how to do at least – uh, the, some imp improvement in energy efficiency. But let me illustrate the problem we have with the fact that last week the re Republican majority in the Energy and Commerce Committee reported out a bill to prevent EPA from being able to regulate uh, climate uh, pollutants, especially carbon emissions. And they said that they're not going to allow, under the Clean Air Act, the actions by the EPA because they're going to change the Clean Air Act itself. And what we said to the Republicans is this, this bill denies cl climate uh, change happening. It ignores it, uh, the problem by saying uh, there is no problem. Or even those who might acknowledge a problem, they have absolutely no solution. So we asked them, if you're going to keep EPA from regulating, and you're not going to be for a tax on carbon. You're not going to be for a cap-and-trade program. You're not going to be for any regulation. What is your answer? What do you have to offer uh, uh, to stop this threat? And, of course, we have the deafening silence of the Republicans on this question. So we, uh, we, we, uh, we're, we're not going to um, meet their silence by our silence and inaction. We'll do whatever we can uh, to advance this issue. And I can say one thing about my years in Congress. Uh, time is on our side to change these policies, but we don't have a lot of time when it comes to the issue of climate change. Last question. Yeah, Mr. Um, Potts. So one of the, the nice things about a little bit more bipartisan ship is there was a new bill that was finally passed, but is there any sort of concern that with the revised appropriations process that House Republicans might start getting spending that would you know, decrease its ability to uh, you know, have oversight over these programs and regulations that are passed every year? Well, the Republicans, especially the right-wingers, 
take the point of view that they don't want government, they want to shrink it, they want to eliminate it, and therefore they take the agencies that regulate to protect the public health and safety and workers' protection, and they try to gut the laws, and if they can't gut the laws, they try to undercut the agency's abilities to do things by defunding them or underfunding them, and then when something terrible happens, they say, see how government didn't respond to the problem. Uh, th this is uh, something we always have to watch out for and push back on, uh, a a and we will, con we will certainly match them on that issue. But the um, essential uh, point is that I think uh, more and more Republicans are going to look for ways to work with Democrats in order to get anything done. They haven't accomplished much of anything since they've been in power. And we put out a report at the beginning of this Congress showing in our own committee that the only proposals that became law were those proposals where we worked together on a bipartisan basis. We're willing to work on a bipartisan basis on good policy, and uh, we will want to see a movement uh, it, for legislation that can be uh, put into uh, effect. Uh, but otherwise, we will fight back uh, when they give uh, ridiculous proposals like trying to stop uh, regulation of coal burning power plants, which is the leading source of uh, greenhouse gases in our country. Thank you all very much.